semua pada sesi utama pada ngobrol bareng online hari ini yaitu penyampaian materi oleh narasumber serta kami turut mengundang Bapak Todo Sibuya SPDM Hum yang bertindak sebagai moderator. Kepada Bapak Todo Sibuya kami persilahkan memandu berjalannya sesi penyampaian materi. We all now arrived at the main session of Ngobrol Barang Online today, which is the talk show. We invite Mr. Todo Sibuya as PDM Hum, who will be the moderator of our event today, to start the session. Terima kasih banyak kepada Ibu Sekar dan Ibu Irma untuk introduction-nya. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, are, we have arrived at the main event of our program. And today we are going to have the present. We are going to watch and listen to the presentation from Madam Ambassador uh, Olivia Leslie and Mr. Jack Fernandez. So, thank you, Miss Ir- Irma and Miss Sakar, for introducing me. Uh, for those who haven't known me, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Todo Sibuya, and I'm the head of. English Literature Department at Universitas Dian Nusantara. And for today's NDO, I act as a moderator of this event. So, uh, on the behalf of Undirat Faculties, once again, I welcome Her Excellency Olivia Leslie, Madam Ambassador of Ireland, and Mr. Jack Fernandez. I'm grateful that we can hold this collaborative event today via Zoom. And because of this online video conference we can we we enable more people outside Undira to attend this talk show. So the theme of our talk show today is introduction to the Republic of Ireland and Madam Ambassador and also Mr. Jack Fernandez has prepared they have prepared presentation that will give us knowledge and insights about Ireland. So in the next 20 minutes we will learn more about Ireland in terms of society, business, industry, and higher ed- education. Um, many of our students here uh, are more familiar with famous uh, influential figures from Ireland like U2 and then Westlife, but <laughs> not all of them know that they all come from Ireland. They think Pierce Brosnan is Hollywood actor, American, but actually he is not American. He is Hollywood actor, but he is yeah. Irish, yeah, just like Liam Neeson. So I think uh, we can start the presentation. Uh, Madam Ambassador, I invite you to deliver your presentation. Thank you very much, Pat Todo. Um, and Salamat Pagi, everyone. Good morning Good from morning. the Embassy of Ireland. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with everyone. I want to thank the University of Dian Santara for inviting myself and my colleague Jack to speak to you about our country, which is, uh, as the rector said, very, very far away. Um, I wish to, to thank the rector and the vice rector and Patodo as well for organizing today and for giving us the opportunity to meet so many of your students virtually. It's really a pleasure for us. And I hope that today's presentation will give you some insight into Ireland and to our relationship here in Indonesia. Um, I think it's very difficult to explain all of Ireland within my presentation. So please forgive me. We're going to touch on a number of different points about Ireland, a little bit of culture, a little bit of politics, a little bit of geography, maybe. And in this period of time, um, we're, we won't go into anything in too much depth, but I hope to give you a good picture of my country. And afterwards, my colleague Jack will speak to you very specifically about education as well. So without further ado, and with thanks to the Rector and Vice Rector again, I'm going to share a presentation. There are a couple of videos in this presentation short, you will be pleased to hear. So um, I hope very much that my, my sharing <laughs> process will, uh, will work here. So if you give me one second, I will um, just get the presentation up for you. And let's see now. Okay, I hope everyone can see the presentation. Please don't uh, hesitate to jump in and uh, 
interrupt me if there's any technical problems. So as I said, we're from the Embassy of Ireland. The Embassy has been in Indonesia for, um, at this point, let me think, seven years. Although we have had diplomatic relationships with Indonesia for the last 37 years, as the Rector said, we only opened an embassy here seven years ago, um, which has really helped us to develop our relationship with Indonesia. So what does the embassy do here? I think that's an important place to start. Uh, in these pictures, you will see uh, Monument National, Monas, and below the monkey forest in Ubud in Bali turned green. And this happened on the 17th of March uh, last, which is St. Patrick's Day, Hari Nacional, Irlandia. And we did this to celebrate the relationship between Ireland and Indonesia and to show, I suppose, to showcase the depth of the work that we do. And what the embassy does here is develop people-to-people -people relationships in culture, in education. So, for example, today's activity is about developing relationships, about uh, showcasing Ireland to Indonesia. Uh, we also work, um, as was referred to by the Rector as well, on issues relating to trade. So helping Irish businesses and helping Indonesian businesses grow the, grow the trading relationship in all the areas that were mentioned, in food and beverage, in technology, in finance, in all of these areas, we have a very strong and growing um, trade relationship. We also look after our Irish citizens here. There aren't so many. There are not that many Indonesians in Ireland either, a couple of hundred, and there are probably a few hundred Irish people in Indonesia as well, living everywhere from Papua to Bali to Sumatra and here in Jakarta. So we look after our citizens. And finally, we work together with Indonesia on political issues as well, because we share an awful lot of political ob objectives. Indonesia is, of course, Southeast Asia's largest democracy, we are believers together in the international multilateral system. So these are some of the areas on which uh, we, the embassy works. Uh, moving on then, um, Patoto mentioned some of the things that people might recognize about Ireland. So here's a question for you. I think a lot of people in the audience here today would recognize some of these uh, I suppose, culturally significant things about Ireland. And up in the top right there, we have Westlife, we have the Coors, who are very popular here. Um, we have uh, Conor McGregor, that some of you might know as well. And in the bottom right-hand corner, a beautiful green field and a leprechaun on the other side. So when we ask Indonesians, what do you think of when you think of Ireland? Often these are the things that they might recognize or Guinness, for example, which is a, a famous Irish drink. Some in, in more recent years, uh, Indonesians might say, well, we know Game of Thrones was filmed in Ireland and Vikings is filmed in Ireland. And of course, uh, perhaps not so many people know, but do now that Liam Neeson and uh, Pierce Brosnan are also Irish as well. So these are some of the most commonly recognized Irish things in Indonesia. Um, I wanted to say as well that in recent years, a lot of Indonesians have gone to Ireland for tourism. And this is something that we're delighted about because, of course, about 30,000 Irish people before the pandemic came to Indonesia every year for tourism uh, to experience the sort of, you know, outstanding natural beauty you have here in Indonesia, which is truly a, a wonderful and beautiful and varied country. And in the same way, more Indonesians are now traveling to Ireland or were before the pandemic. And we hope uh, with, with the, um, with, with, we are hopeful that this will continue again. And one thing that Ireland is renowned for is its natural beauty. And with that, I'm going to play you a very short video showcasing some of Ireland's uh, natural beauty. I hope it works. If it doesn't, we'll just pause it and move on. Um, so we can start that now. So beautiful. <laughs> so some of these places are, uh, this is near my hometown here. That's breathtaking scenery. 
Uh, hope to good day very, very ah. soon. Oh, wow. I'm sorry that there's no audio involved. Unfortunately, it's playing at this end, but not working at your end. But I can give you some some uh, some descriptions of some of these areas, which is the mostly the west coast of Ireland. There we go. So th those are some of the rather lovely parts of Ireland. Um, I've stopped the video because there's no audio. So I hope you can hear me now again. So uh, those are just some some quick clips of uh, of what parts of Ireland look like and what some Indonesian tourists have enjoyed uh, over the over the last uh, over the last few years. And I hope we'll come to enjoy again once the pandemic is over. So moving on a little bit of geography, if that's OK with all of you. Um, I wanted to put Ireland here for scale. So Ireland is the small green island you can see there, and it fits almost perfectly between the coast of uh, Java and Kalimantan. So that will tell you how small Ireland is in comparison to Indonesia. My favorite fact about Indonesia is that you can fly from, uh, to, to fly from Aceh to Jayapura takes the same time to fly from the capital of Ireland, Dublin, to uh, Tehran in, in Iran. So it just goes to show that uh, Ireland is obviously much smaller than Indonesia. Um, and while we are an island state as well, comparatively, we, we are in a different, we're in a different situation. <laughs> so next up, I wanted to give the audience some quick facts about Ireland. Uh, our population is about 5 million people. Um, that's our, uh, you know, and you can see where we are there. We're a small country on the westernmost edge of Europe. So there is very little between us and Boston um, in the in the US. Uh, so we have an Atlantic climate as well. So unlike Indonesia, we have four distinct clim uh, seasons in, in every year. Um, it rained an awful lot in Jakarta last night. I can tell you this is very familiar to Irish people because we also have a lot of rain. Um, we speak English generally as our first language. The majority of people speak English as their first language, but our national language is Irish. And all of us are also educated in Irish at school, so we, we know the language quite well. And it is a, a matter of some pride to us to have our own national language as well. We've been an independent country since the 1920s. So like Indonesia, we are in the generation of 20th century independent countries. So we share that in common as well. We use the euro as our currency, uh, which is very helpful because um, it means that when I go from Dublin to Paris or to Madrid or to the Netherlands for a weekend break, the currency is the same. So um, uh, for all of you here in ASEAN, uh, the development of a common currency was one of the most important um, factors in the development of the European Union, of which Ireland is, is a member, and I can uh, thoroughly uh, recommend it. And the final thing I wanted to say on our small kind of fact file here uh, is that Ireland is one of the world's most globalized countries. And what does that mean? That means that we have an awful lot of our citizens living abroad. For example, there are 5,000 Irish people in Hong Kong. Uh, we have an awful lot of foreign people living in Ireland as well. So that means that we are have a high turnover. I think it comes up in a later slide. I think possibly in our next slide. Yes, that's correct. 13% of the people who live in Ireland are non-Irish. And we are very proud of this uh, sort of multicultural net uh, immigration to our country, which is helping us build stronger society, stronger um, culture and stronger economy as well. So here we just have some statistics about what Ireland is like. Uh, our population of our capital city is nearly one third of, um, of, of our entire population. So uh, like Java, Dom Dublin dominates Ireland and like Java dominates Indonesia by population, obviously on a much, a much smaller scale. So as you can see from this as well, Irish people tend to go abroad and come back and live live abroad very much like the Indonesian diaspora. Ireland has a large diaspora abroad. So as you can see, about 30,000 came back to live in Ireland and about 30,000 left. Uh, so we, we have a constant uh, 
in and out of in and out of people in the same way as you have here in Indonesia with a obviously on a bigger scale but you have a very strong diaspora abroad uh, notably of course in Malaysia we have a large population uh, diaspora in the United Kingdom in Britain in the the neighboring island so to speak so just moving on here uh, very quickly, just some thoughts on the Irish economy. In case anyone will have questions about this afterwards, I'd be happy to to talk about them. Like every economy, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant impact on how we how we are uh, performing and also on our public finances. Just like Indonesia, we've had to borrow money. We've gone to the international markets. Uh, we are part of the EU's uh, recovery plan as well as an EU member. However, we were very lucky because our economy was in a strong position from 2019, marking growth at over 5%, not unlike Indonesia. And this has me meant that the shock of the pandemic has been less difficult um, for, the, for the rest of for Ireland than perhaps it has been for some other countries. Um, nonetheless, we don't expect GDP growth for 2021 um, of more than 2%, which obviously presents a lot of difficulties for uh, for us as a country as we try to pay our bills, just as it does here in Indonesia. However, there are some positives. Uh, vaccine rollout in Ireland is not as fast as it is in the US, but it, it is quite good. And we have 10% of people will have had their first dose of a vaccine and 5% will have had their second dose of a vaccine. So. You have to remember that sometimes I know Indonesia is doing 500,000 vaccines a day. Ireland is a much smaller country, so we haven't uh, we haven't done quite as uh, quite the, the number of, as uh, as you would have done here in Indonesia. And I wish Indonesia the best of luck with the rest of the vaccination program. Next up, some of you will be aware that the United Kingdom, which is our neighbouring country and with whom we share a part, share an island. So. Um, for those of you who are not aware, the island of Ireland is divided currently. Uh, I am from Ireland and there is also Northern Ireland, a small area to the northeast, which is still part of the United Kingdom. Um, and the United Kingdom has now left the European Union. And this has had quite a significant impact on economies across the EU and, of course, on the UK's economy as well. However, we expect that the trade and cooperation agreement that the EU, of which we are part, has now negotiated with the UK will soften the impact of, of Brexit. And just finally, what does all this mean for our relationship with Indonesia? Well, we do an awful lot of trade with Indonesia. And in fact, our trade has increased during the pandemic. Uh, medical equipment coming from Ireland here, obviously food and goods like that, etc., coming out. So we are happy to see that we're continuing to grow the economic relationship between Ireland and Indonesia, despite the very challenging times that we find ourselves in currently. OK, I have one slide here. I'm not going to spend long on it because it's a short enough. It's from it's from uh, 2020 and really it's about how Ireland earns and spends its money. So um, as you can see here, some of the things I thought were quite interesting were that people spend 6.2 percent of their income. Uh, and sorry, there's been an increase of 6.2 percent of income on clothing and footwear. An awful lot of that comes from Indonesia. So that's that's an interesting um, uh, point for for you guys to think about that uh, more clothes and shoes produced here in Indonesia are being bought in Ireland, which is uh, uh, which is a positive and is helping econ economies in Ireland, shops who sell the, the things and also the manufacturers here. Um, as you can see from here as well, there's about 120 billion of uh, goods and exports, which is quite significant for a small country. And then about 70, 75 billion of uh, services exports. OK, so I'm just going to move on from there. If there are questions about the economy, I'm very happy to ask them, answer them afterwards. Um, as I mentioned before, Ireland's a member of the European Union. I know Indonesia is an ASEAN member, so you will appreciate the importance of membership of regional organizations. Um, we are fully committed EU members uh, with almost the entire population, about 85% of Irish people feeling that they are both Irish and European and that the free movement of people, goods and services is the most positive result of the EU. 
So if I wish I can go and live in France or Spain or Germany and I can work there and I can trade with those places without tariffs. And we also believe that the European Union helps us as a smaller country amplify our voice. So, for example, on issues related to conflict, uh, to conflict, to migration, to climate change, when we speak together with our 26 member state colleagues, we are much stronger and that we can uh, we can sit at the international table as a block of 500 million people, just as ASEAN can sit at the table as a block of 600 million people. So, we, as I said, we are very proud EU members and we feel that being part of the European Union has helped us develop our society, our economy, and has been the cornerstone of social progress in Ireland over the last generation. So that's one political element of how we work. The next political element of how we work is our membership of the United Nations Security Council. So Ireland was voted onto the United Nations Security Council for the period of 2021 to 2022. Those of you who are students of politics uh, and international relations may know, of course, that Indonesia was a member of the United Nations Security Council from 2018 to 2020. So we basically took over where Indonesia left off. We have an awful lot uh, in common with Indonesia. We believe in the multilateral system. We believe in peacekeeping and we believe that the UN is must be at the heart of all foreign policy and that it's the, the promotion of rules based international order is essential for small states to thrive and prosper. And uh, we have started on the UN Security Council now. We are now four months into our tenure there. It remains a difficult international setting. As you are all aware, there is instability and conflict across the world. And we hope as Ireland to be able to contribute to mitigating some of this and to putting in place solutions to allow people to move from conflict and the the impacts of conflict generally on women, on children, on the poorest, etc. So we hope that our term on the Security Council will allow us to, to, to contribute on the global stage, just as it allowed Indonesia to contribute on the global stage. Now, I had another short video here. I'm going to press play on it because uh, I'm going to not play it because I believe there's issues with the audio. But uh, this little bird here is the Irish symbol of the uh, of our Security Council tenure. And essentially, it's a, uh, this is just a short video outlining our commitment to peacekeeping. As I said, I don't think we will uh, we, we will look at it now because of audio issues, but Ireland has had uh, peacekeepers for uh, in the field with the UN for over 50 years. We have a continuous record of unbroken service. We serve alongside Indonesian peacekeepers as well in Lebanon, in Unifil, um, and in Africa, in Minusco. So uh, Indonesian and Irish uh, soldiers serve together to bring peace and security around the world. And this is a key part of our political cooperation. Moving on, I wanted to uh, slightly less uh, <laughs> seriously, I suppose, than the UN. We have a picture of a beautiful Irish cow. Um, uh, Ireland is resolutely an agricultural country. And I think that despite the fact that we have many, many tech companies, that we have a huge financial services sector, it's always important to note, and you will have seen some pictures of green fields there uh, earlier on, that Ireland's an agricultural country and two thirds of the land is used for farming. We have 137,500 farms on the island and many of them are quite small, just like many Indonesian farms are quite small, uh, around 35 hectares. We are a very significant food exporter. We have, you will find Irish products in 180 markets worldwide. That includes here in Indonesia, we export quite a lot of milk powder here and dairy. And as a country, we produce five times more food than we need. And that food sustainability is a hallmark of Ireland and it is uh, an expertise that we share around the world with other countries and that we are interested in engaging with Indonesia on. Jack will be mentioning some of the educational opportunities in Ireland in his presentation in a few minutes time. However, interesting to note that Ireland scores extremely well in international rankings on issues related to agricultural science and agricultural uh, research. It's an area where we are very, very strong. 
Now, moving on. And just as I'm going to wrap up shortly, because I've been talking for a long time, um, I wanted to just say that it is the Irish government's priority to expand our influence abroad. So a couple of years ago, something called Global Ireland was launched, and it's the government's strategy, I suppose, to, to broaden Ireland's global engagement. And politically, that means being very engaged as a European Union member and currently as a member of the United Nations Security Council. It means engaging with our diaspora abroad, the Irish people who are working hard in countries all over the world, bringing our culture and our heritage to different different countries. And it also means working um, to promote our culture and our tourism. And I'm uh, very sorry that at the moment people cannot travel to Ireland and people cannot travel to Indonesia, but I do think tourism will recover and I consider it also a very part of my job, to, a very important part of my job to promote culture. That includes music, uh, that includes literature, um, as Padota will know. But on the culture side, I wanted to mention that there's a wonderful um, uh, Indonesian musician called Rivalino Ismaya. He has a band called Wafton and they play fantastic Irish music right here in Jakarta. And I'm looking forward to the time when we can all go and enjoy that music in person as well. Now, at this point, I'm going to wrap up. I think this was a very speedy tour of Ireland. Um, and I really hope that uh, uh, it gave you um, gave you some interest in 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 our country, and and Jack will speak to you in a minute about the third level education system there. Just a map here of some of our universities, world class universities. Um, but I will leave education to to the next presenter. But with that, I just want to say thank you so much to all of you for your time this morning. It's been really a pleasure um, to speak to you. And uh, I hope I have stopped sharing my screen there and we can uh, move on to the next presenter and I'm open for any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Ambassador. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have learned a lot in such a short time about Ireland. So Ireland is not just about the cranberries, sour Ronan, but it, all, it is also famous for uh, agri agriculture technology, food technology, and it has uh, many wonderful universities with great academic background. Uh, one that I always remember is Trinity, Trinity College. Uh, I had a friend who, who once told me a story about her experience studying at Trinity College. Uh, well, Madam Ambassador, I think I want to ask you a question uh, about the the famous people, influential people coming from Ireland. Uh, we have so many famous influential people from the field of arts and humanities, like actors, singers, uh, I wonder, is it is there any particular emphasis from Ireland government to put what is it a kind of special emphasis on the education of arts and humanities because so many influential people are in those fields. Yes, this is a good question. I'm sure that many Irish people would say, oh, we're naturally very uh, artistic or naturally very talented. But no, yes, the government does put quite a lot of emphasis on music for young people, on uh, literature in particular, um, as well as on other uh, visual arts. And, and that's something that's growing the visual arts. But um, Ireland, we're, we're extremely lucky that we have um, different ambassadors who go out into the world for us as artists. Uh, we also have a very famous, um, you know, very Nobel Prize winners for literature, such as Seamus Heaney, the poet, uh, W.B. Yeats, James Joyce, of course, who's uh, one of the world's most famous, um, uh, was one of the world's most, most famous uh, writers. Uh, on the music side, I think it really is that 
There are many traditions in the countryside in the west of Ireland around traditional music. Um, I've had the pleasure in Indonesia of traveling all over the country. And uh, for example, I was in Ambon a couple of years ago and they're famous for being very musical in, <laughs> in Ambon, in Maluku, etc. And there are parts of Ireland like that as well. And it's, it's a matter of great pleasure to us that we have a gamelan orchestra in Ireland, as referred to um, in one of the opening speeches, and that we have a wonderful Indonesian um, Ilan Pipes player here as well. So yes, the government puts a huge focus on it for young people, but we also put a big focus on supporting artists adult artists so you know not everyone is is uh is pierce brosnan or the cranberries and very successful and makes a lot of money but we have put in place a lot of measures to support artists including during the pandemic when their incomes fell so yes a central part of government policy thank you madam ambassador jadi uh, kepada hadirin pertanyaan kita sudah terjawab mengapa banyak artis musisi aktor datang dari Irlandia rupanya seperti yang dijelaskan oleh Ibu Amba, Ibu Duta Besar pemerintah Irlandia memang memberikan penekanan khusus pada pendidikan seni, budaya, teater sehingga ini yang membuat banyak uh, apa, aktor, penyanyi, musisi uh, datang dari Irlandia dan mereka secara tidak langsung juga menjadi Duta Besar Irlandia Thank you.